very good afternoon to all of you. I am Shantanu Bhattacharya and today I am actually going to demonstrate physically how you are able to generate micro channels within PMMA material using the laser engraving process. In our lectures earlier, we have uh, made a detailed study of how laser machining works. It's basically based on uh, beam matter interaction. There is a, a surface uh, which if interacting with the laser beam would absorb the beam and because of the absorption coefficient, there would be a local heating. So there is a photon to phonon or a vibration, bond vibration conversion because of which there is a local increase in the heat and the heating uh, goes up to an ex extent that <coughs> it starts to locally uh, vaporize and melt the material and there is a change in the solid density uh, in that particular zone of interaction which goes into uh, the particular material and uh, this is really the process of engraving. So today we have with us this small laser engraving and cutting system which is uh, uh, from a company called Epilog. This tool is working on the principle of a small 10 micron spot of laser which scans and rasters the surface uh, thus creating the engravement or uh, the formulation of the micro channel within soft and hard polymeric materials. This is uh, the machine cover and uh, you can see on the left corner, left upper corner here of the system, there is a small lasing head which uh, actually is a CO2 laser. And uh, the, the head is uh, assisted mechanically or rather electromechanically to move in a manner so that it moves like an inkjet printer head on the top surface of this machine and rasters the machine in a line by line manner. So the red actually, the, the, the red laser spot, the CO2 laser spot moves around in a linear manner, line by line manner and scans um, the whole surface at a resolution of about 50 microns between the two lines. So if I were to divide this surface by scanning it into lines of different, uh, uh, different types and natures, the minimum spacing between two such lines is about 50 microns and this really defines the way that the laser uh, is used for cutting uh, on soft and hard polymeric materials. So uh, therefore we are really limited on to the process of getting resolution up to the extent of 50 microns and therefore anything above 50 microns can really be etched and formulated using this particular machine. Uh, there are other systems of laser and in fact I am going to talk about that uh, subsequently in one of the presentations where you can see even higher accuracy lasers which can go up to a spot size of probably a micron and uh, a super fine resolution achieved by series of demagnification uh, techniques which would eventually be able to write at a 10 micron by 10 micron uh, feature array onto metallic surfaces as well as polymeric surfaces. But in this particular application as we are intending to show you a way to fabricate a microfluidic channel or a microfluidic device, we really uh, can limit ourselves to this resolution of about 50 microns. Our channel sizes in uh, the current application that we are envisioning are not uh, less than 100 microns. So we can easily use this lasing machine for such an application. So the substrate that I am going to use uh, for doing the whole process of laser machining is a polymethyl methacrylate substrate. You can see it's a clear plexiglass uh, substrate of thickness about two millimeters. From the edges you can make that. And this uh, is a pretty good material for actually doing replication and molding of soft polymers like PDMS, etc. If we can change the surface composition a little bit after the etching process is over. So today throughout this experiment, I'm going to take you through a series of steps where we are going to first etch the micro channel onto the system. And then with this etched micro channel, I'm going to modify the surfaces in a manner so that it can act as a mold, <coughs> a micro mold. And then in another part of the experiment, we are going to use a polymeric, soft polymeric material called polydimethyl siloxane, which can be, it's like an epoxy rubber, which can be poured onto the top of a micro mold with some suitable release agent which you apply to the surface and you are able to separate that later so that whatever uh, channel like features or uh, other structures you have embedded onto this system is replicated. The negative of that is replicated or casted 
onto that liquid material. This process incidentally is also coined uh, with the terminology micro replication by double inversion or MRDI process. So, uh, coming back to the lasing business, uh, as you know here as, as I already defined this laser spot needs to be um, calibrated properly as to the extent of focus that it would have on this sheet and <coughs> the step by step uh, approach is that you have first of all put this substrate on the lasing near, uh, below the lasing head on the laser on the, on the cutting bed of the machine and uh, you had to first uh, switch on the machine and try to be able to calibrate whether the focus uh, of this laser is matching and for that you are using a sort of jig which has been provided by the system manufacturer which talks about the exact depth <coughs> from the lasing torch to the surface where it is etching where the focus would be right about enough for the lasing action to happen. One thing you have to remember is that this PMMA surface is highly shiny in nature which would create a lot of power loss because of reflection and uh, our group here has formulated uh, a diverse amount of strategies where such optimizations can be performed corresponding to the different cutting parameters so that uh, by minimum usage of power you would be able to generate a very fine finish or fine surface and I am going to detail those uh, optimization experiments in a later presentation module uh, which eventually would come after this uh, experiment. So, I am going to now put this uh, jig onto the system here you can see it is magnetically assisted. So, it basically goes and clubs on to the laser mounter, <coughs> laser mount and uh, this kind of gives you a feeling of how much depth of focus it really needs to achieve for the laser to have a good focal spot and uh, what we are going to do is to calibrate our system by taking up this bed by suitable distance so that it starts just about touching this point here uh, by leaving uh, not very high pressure on this particular jig so that you can actually put it on the focal spot of the lasing surface. So, I would switch on the machine and uh, it will take some time to initialize you can see there is a controller here of this machine which has been uh, uh, built in by the manufacturer and there are several options on this controller which uh, says different um, or which says about different aspects like go, stop, reset, speed, power, set home x y off job focus down up a pointer so on so forth. So, what I am going to do is to first calibrate the system by turning on the focus spot here <coughs> and the moment I say that you can see that uh, the lasing head has now come on to a certain point which is probably the x y 0 of the system and uh, it is going to now uh, be able to uh, <coughs> set up the focal spot of the laser. So, I can move the lasing bed up by the z motion control there is a motor and a slide in this direction and you can see this bed coming up clearly till the surface of the workpiece touches just about touches the <coughs> lower portion of the jig. So, this is actually uh, still not touching. So, we can actually go a little further ahead and uh, this is right about the focal spot of the laser that it has achieved. You may uh, just try to recall that if the surfaces have various thicknesses you may use a thicker substrate or a thinner substrate accordingly the z motion would be different and therefore, this motion and this calibration needs to be somehow incorporated on the system itself. So, what I am going to now do is to sort of take off this jig because the purpose of its focusing is over. And there is again if you look at the control panel here on the controller there is uh, a, an indicator called pointer. So, if I press this pointer system it is going to generate the spot uh, which is actually now very much visible if you look from the top here <coughs> and uh, the lasing is like this. So, it is at a certain angle and uh, I can actually see that there is a very well focused spot that is formulating on the top of this uh, acrylic slide. And uh, one more aspect is that uh, the pointer is used not only for checking the focus, but also to see how the rastering action of the laser head happens over the surface of this acrylic sheet. 
So supposing if the pattern that uh, we are eventually going to generate through a software uh, is not readed properly by the machine, there has to be a way to find out what is the track or modality that this lazing head is following or whether it is different than whatever pattern was intended to be engraved onto the surface of the uh, PMMA sheet. So that's why this pointer. So I will just now, as of now, close this pointer and we'll turn it on later. You can see there is a red dot off command which comes on the top of this controller. <coughs> Let me make it very clear that this controller here is mostly uh, for manual applications. The machine has an interface with uh, a software and typically is driven by the software. So whatever uh, uh, drawing formats are generated, which actually are drawn in a package, a computer-aided designing package, in this case it is Coral Draw, uh, that, that basically converts into uh, numerical data and there is uh, a format like data exchange format or PDES, product data exchange specification format, which is followed. So the data is translated onto the controller here. And uh, beyond that, the, the controller executes a set of commands to the various motors and the various slides which are present within the system. So electronic data <coughs> or numerical data comes on to the system and uh, makes the controller to execute uh, different motions along the different stepper and uh, analog motors which are available and the drives therein so that all this mechanical action of scanning, rastering, etc. can occur of this head on the top of this whole workpiece surface. So I am going to now close off this lid because we are kind of done with the uh, formality which is here. The only other uh, command that we need to use because it is an automatic control that I am teaching today is the go command which will be used once our software is processed and we are able to draw a feature which we want to engrave on the top of this uh, uh, plexiglass slide. And so uh, we just need to forget about everything else regarding this controller, which is used in case there is a manual job which you are processing. We are now going to uh, illustrate the way that we use a computer-aided design package for <coughs> uh, printing material or different shapes and features which are useful for our microfluidic devices using this uh, lasing system or a laser engraving system. So here we are using this package Coral Draw X5. Uh, we go into uh, the package and open a new blank document. And the document shows uh, a reference size which automatically gets. It is a default size which has been set into the system, uh, which is not same as the size of the acrylic sheet that we have put in the lasing engraving system. So I'm going to actually change the template size here to the size of the acrylic block uh, by going up here <coughs> and uh, making it 609 mm, which is uh, what the length of that block that we just put in the engraving bed is. And the width of that particular block is about 300 mm. And uh, we get new set of template size, which is similar to the block. The, the advantage of this uh, ab initio uh, process that we are doing, the initialization process that we are doing is that we are trying to make a high throughput production and the idea is to be able to judiciously utilize the whole uh, uh, acrylic sheet that we are going to get uh, engraved using lasing. And so just as in silicon based lithography, we have a concept of die size. Here also each device would be contained in a certain size or certain domain of this wafer which is not the totality and it is called one die. Okay, so we are having multiple options of printing these dies onto this whole template so that in one engravement we can have various shapes, features, sizes, etc. engraved onto the system and then we can actually use either CNC milling or some other process even band uh, saw based cutting to cut these die sizes out. Of course, it will not have that fine resolution as the silicon processing would have. But in our applications here, I think uh, considering the faster speed of the process and also uh, you know, the need of going beyond 100 microns, uh, we can easily manage with such a system to be able to produce accurate enough for our applications. So here, I am going to now first uh, introduce the die size 
by selecting this tool on the left corner uh, in this particular zone here it is called the rectangular rectangle tool and uh, I am going to actually lay out this rectangle uh, in one corner of this template where I would like to position this not at really the edge of the of the acrylic log, but at some distance away uh, in order to ensure uh, a proper template size being machined okay, uh, with flat edges. And uh, what I am also going to do is to sort of change the units here a little bit if you focus here on the right uh, on the center center uh, spot of the screen you find out a, a set of commands called units where there are different units which are used we are using the inches uh, scale here particularly for the die sizing and the uh, referencing so therefore we will just change this to inches and then the idea is I can do this selection tool on the left side again and try to select this block and this window on the right called the transformation window it pops up and what you can do is you uh, can change the size into a conventionally used uh, die size of 2 point or 2 inches uh, horizontal by 1 inch vertical uh, template size uh, <coughs> and once the side has been set you can apply so that uh, the feature has now uh, been converted into the template size indicated. You can once again do the selection of uh, this uh, particular feature and try to take it to uh, the same spot as before leaving some allowance between the vertical edge and the horizontal edge of the template. Now this die size is very small uh, for application of uh, trying to lay out some features here which would eventually get engraved. So what I am going to do is to use the center cursor of the mouse here to zoom up and again go or align myself to the center of the template uh, or center of the die that has been created and we can draw the features that we want <coughs> in this particular zone here which would get engraved onto this die. So the idea is that there are two approaches that the lasing head follows one is called a vector scanning where uh, only through cutting action is initiated and then there is a raster scanning where whatever features you are trying to engrave on the inside of this block gets uh, initiated. So with these two features you can actually cut completely a die size and engrave in that die size very easily and let us make a uh, microfluidic uh, small channel uh, assembly that we were talking about. So what I am going to do is to print circular reservoirs go to the left corner here select an ellipse tool and bring it back to the die uh, and I can actually after laying it here try to change uh, the, the scale again into millimeters. through this tab center tab here and uh, then again try to do the selection of this particular ellipse and make this 2 mm by 2 mm. So because it is an ellipse you have a question of a major and minor axis. So here the major and minor axis because it is uh, we are talking about a circular reservoir are same to each other we we'll make it 2 mm diameter apply this. So it actually um, gets formulated somewhere in this block. So we can actually pick this ellipse move it around through the block wherever necessary. I would like to place it somewhere close to the center of this block in the interest of the final replication and molding process that we would be doing and we can create a copy of this file again the same system. And move this copy all the way to the other end of the die and would generate an interconnect between the two reservoirs circular reservoirs by using again a rectangle tool. Now here this channel rectangular channel is intended to have a size of about let us say close to 1.5 inches. So I am going to change back the units again back to inches 
and uh, so I'm going to convert this rectangle which we uh, had here into a 1.5 inches length converting the units into inches again making the selection of this rectangle go back here and make 1.5 inches apply it so that it goes to that particular length and uh, then I can actually change back the units once more back to mm and go uh, further selection here and do millimeter size. So, the vertical there can be 0.1 mm or uh, 100 microns. So, this is how the channel really looks like I mean uh, I can now uh, try to again select back these two features. So, that they can be moved to uh, both ends or both edges of this channel and uh, then we will see how it looks like uh, in a magnified uh, view okay, of the assembly. So, we just uh, go to this finer level and look into how the circle is going to make an interaction with the channel and you can see here clearly that there is some kind of a edge of the channel sticking out of the circle. So, I am going to now sort of move and align it by making a selection of the circle and moving it back to about this point and similarly uh, trying to match uh, to an accurate extent, extent all these different features and do a similar job towards the other end where the other second reservoir is being placed here. Okay. So, here I can again make a selection and try to align it more or less with the center of this channel and so we have now a uh, feature which is like a input output uh, microfluidic channel of about 1.5 inches length and 100 microns diameter. So, once we are uh, set on all this we can actually uh, use control and cut control. The so, what we are now going to do is to uh, make a selection so that we can combine uh, both the reservoirs and the channel. So, once this whole uh, feature is selected I can go to the uh, I, I can make a right click here cut combine make a right click here and combine all these images together as a single entity. So, now these all three uh, different geometric features have been combined together as a single entity. And what we are going to also do is to place or grab this and place it somewhere along the center of this uh, particular uh, die and uh, again combine the die along with the whole uh, structure. By selecting on it and uh, combining the whole thing together. So, now if I am able to uh, move this whole combined imagery it we uh, you know it, it work, works as one group and it can move as one group to wherever you place it. So, once we are done with this basic processing uh, we are kind of left with uh, a lot of other space on this particular template as can be seen from the size of the block that we had actually initially estimated and you can actually copy um, one of these blocks and repeat it multiple times. However, while doing that you do not really have a control on the positioning of these uh, different dies across the whole screen and so there is a very convenient option which is uh, available here in the edit mode which talks about step and repeat. Okay. So, what uh, can be done here is that you basically take the selection of this whole feature here and go to this uh, step and repeat option which creates a window 
on the right here it pops up a window which says horizontal setting uh, and vertical setting okay and so as the step and repeat option means that either the copying would happen in the horizontal manner or the copying would happen in the vertical manner and uh, both of them cannot be together so in one of them you have to program no offset in other you can actually have spacing defined between the objects and it will simply copy in this particular case let's say we want to copy this one die size vertically to <coughs> all the way to from one edge here right here to the other edge uh, somewhere here and uh, that way we want to flood the vertical spacing of this one column which has been generated in a row wise manner so what i'm going to do is to uh, provide no offset to the horizontal setting uh, tab and then provide uh, spacing between objects to the vertical setting tab let's say the distance between two such blocks is about 1 mm uh, so i just formulate this uh, and select this to set it to about 1 mm and the direction of selection can be either upwards or downwards in this case there is space left in the downward direction and uh, uh, i can apply so many number of copies in this particular case because this is about an inch uh, so there can be about uh, uh, this this size is about an inch which is about 25 mm and there are about 300 mm uh, vertical spacing of the the initial die size or the initial uh, 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 pmma block size the acrylic block size which has been used so i can go with about 9 or 10 such features placed one below another so i just do nine features here and uh, i can actually apply this selecting the group and it will actually copy uh, all these nine in a vertical manner uh, let's just look at the spacing and this seems to be a 1 mm spacing between them i can actually go to a further higher size uh, to just see uh you know whether this can be uh, spaced at a little more distance between each other let's make it about 4 mm okay and that way we just limit ourselves to about close to seven such features let's say and we apply so here you can see that all these features are copied in a very nice manner across this uh, in in a columnar manner here uh you can probably flood many features into this whole template and then go for the machining operation so now uh, you have multiple features here on this acrylic surface as you can see and we'll all uh, together print this on the acrylic surface using the engraving system so for doing this what we have to initially do is to save this file in a certain format in a certain name let's call it advanced manufacturing process for micro systems fabrication this is name of the file save it in the desktop and i can go and do control p to get into the print menu where you can see different options here so we select the printer as the epilog engraver uh, win32 based and we can also go into the preferences option here to set up the parameters that would be needed for the printing so basically uh, you know you can print at about 1200 dpi and these are some things which have been already optimized by our uh, research team uh, through various design of experiments uh, protocols and one such optimization will be shown subsequently in a uh, presentation the powerpoint presentation later after this uh, whole process is executed we set up the uh, operating speed to be 60% of the maximum speed and the optimum power Uh, to be about 40% of the maximum power which is available uh, for this system and uh, the power and speed uh, maxima are mentioned in the uh, manual the service manual related to this or any other system you have to just see how much percentage of the maximum values you are using for your particular operation you have to also set the uh, total template size which in our case is about close to 609 Uh, millimeters by 300 millimeters which amounts to about 24 inches uh, horizontal by 12 inches vertical 
so it's all preset here and then of course uh, you can uh, after setting all this you're doing this engraving direction top down uh, so therefore uh, you know uh, this option has to be selected there is also a bottom up approach which uh, can be done in some other laser configurations and this particular machine operates mostly on the top down approach and uh, we make it okay so uh, then we are now ready to set uh, the system so what i'm going to do is to apply these settings to the uh, the controller of the system and use the print option the moment i do the print command here the particular file name advanced manufacturing processes would be displayed onto the uh, LC, uh, the um, the monitor the lcd monitor of the controller so i'm going to now do the print option here and go over to the machine so as you can see here the job 1 uh, reads advanced manufacturing processes which means the corresponding file which was uh, transported from the coral draw software has now been received by the controller of the laser engraving system so probably the dxf or the pds whatever specification format comes uh, in uh, the, the numerical data is transported in the same format so now the machine has read the drawing and it should be able to print just as a inkjet printer so all what we need to do now is to switch on the pointer to see how the laser spot uh, rasters over the surface and whether it's doing the job properly and then uh, do the go command the moment there is a, the go command is executed the laser head would start rastering and scanning on the surface so it's a pretty fast process you can see uh, features being formulated one channel has already been made in this particular area in this particular zone as you can see and uh, there are many multiple channels which are being imprinted at a very high rate of machining and this itself shows that how high throughput or how high yield this lasing process is um, and uh, it is similar to the yield that a conventional lithography process would produce because you have to remember that in a lithography there is also time associated with making of the mask in the chromium uh, uh, coated glass plate where there is substantial amount of this laser etching time which is there for the mask to be made all the lithography is a one shot go the light falls onto the resist through the mask but mask making is an identical process here here uh, only one shot the whole uh, engravement happens onto the surface and once it happens we are done with all other steps we don't need any other chemical steps following that you can now see also you can actually hear the uh, the sound of uh, the system
so you have now seen that the the rastering action has happened and all these different features have been imprinted onto the PMMA surface. Now, we have to actually do the vector action meaning thereby that these individual templates need to be removed from the acrylic uh, piece by piece and for that the command or the way that we proceed is more or less same we do control P and go to this epilog engraver option here do preferences and then the only other option that we have to set in is the different cutting parameters as you know in this particular case it is going to be a more amount of dwell time and a higher amount of power so therefore we have to reduce the speed and uh, also increase the power so here what we are going to do is to basically go to the vector mode okay and now do the power and speed settings here take the speed to about close to 8 percent of the actual maximum speed and let the power go all the way to about 100 percent of maximum power so you have more dwell time more power uh, so that you can actually penetrate through the 2 mm sheet and be able to cut it vectorially and you can increase the frequency of the laser all the way to about 500 hertz 5000 hertz so once so these parameters again have been preset based on a lot of design of experiment studies done by the research group and we are going to uh, represent all this how these optimization has been done later on eventually right now i am just going to show you the machining process so we make this okay and then apply the settings to it and then do in a similar manner we do the print command and so automatically the file will now be able to go back into the controller and start cutting vectorially so you can actually see now job number two here which is the same file essentially but here we are changing from the raster mode into the vector mode so that the each individual die can be separated so it's actually a die separation step and what we are going to do here is to just press this go button so that now you can see that how uh, the lasing spot is able to etch off vectorially the die template of each feature and structure and so therefore you'll have a series of these dies coming out at the end of the day um, uh, which would formulate the basis for all our replication and molding process in uh, the next step of this experiment.
so we are now going to unload the machine of the work surface or work piece as you can see here the individual pieces which are formulated has uh, engraving on the center by the rastering action and uh, a full scale cutting on the sides which makes it of die size uh, 2 inches by 1 inch and I am going to now pick off this acrylic sheet and uh, leave back the material which is actually cut and which can be used as a template. So, <coughs> this for example is one such template that you can see where uh, the edges here are vectorially cut and the center member here is rast, uh, you know, rastered or raster cut. I am going to use this further for replication process where there is going to be a liquid polymer which will create negative of this and we will take another step where we will create a negative of that negative which will build the exact same engraved channel on the top of that polymer which we will be using for our further microfluidic applications.